Hey, it's Anfa. In this video, I want to show you Mix, an open source DJing program. I haven't been using Mix for quite a few years now, but I have played a few gigs in my life, so by no means I would call myself a DJ, not in the slightest. So please don't judge me on that front, okay? I want to show you the program because I think it's really interesting and basically it's a fully featured DJing environment that you can use to perform gigs. I assume you have already installed Mix, so I'm going to just run it. And this is like the first run. Um, I Okay, so the first thing it says, it's want to know where is our music library. I have something. Oh, that's that. There's some music we can work with. Okay, so that's the basic user interface. It has analyzed the library we have, or read the metadata. Uh, there is no really meta, no real metadata, so like, yeah. Okay, so this is the user interface. We have, by default, we have two decks. So we can just uh, drag two tracks and we can play them. Now I need to first connect the outputs of mix to my recording rig. Um, so let me just do that. Mix outputs. Okay, okay, they go straight to the... All right, that should be good. So now I should be able to just play uh, a track. Here it is. I can see that it automatically analyzes the beats per minute, the tempos of these tracks. And now we can also play the second track and crossfade between them. Now that's by no means a good mix or anything, but that's just a rudimentary tool, okay? You have this crossfader, and you can see we have we have two uh, waveforms which are stacked on top of each other, and we have the beats uh, displayed, so that should help us um, like visually beach ma beach beat match the two tracks. You can also perform scratching either with this vinyl widget here using your mouse or by dragging on this waveform. And actually I think that's one of the best ways to create believable scratching uh, performances if you don't have an actual vinyl record player and you don't want to actually go down and make it for real, uh, is by using mix and just performing them with your mouse and recording the audio output. Okay, so we can play tracks. Now, what if we wanted to analyze maybe a bit more of these tracks? Oh, analyze. Oh, okay. Let's analyze all. Select all and analyze. Okay, it's analyzing the tracks, so we should be able to find tracks that are in similar tempo. Oh, it even tries to analyze the key of the song. Wow, that's interesting. The, in the user interface has changed a lot since I last used this program, and that's for the better. Like, when I used it, it had like a few skins, which were, some were cool, some were less. But right now you can click this sprocket icon, and you can like reconfigure the, the skin on the fly. You can have four decks if you want to play four instead of two. Um, you can disable this parallel waveform view and just have them here. So I think that's a neat thing. You can disable the cover art displays. I don't have assigned cover arts for these tracks. They are work in progress, so nothing is displayed here. Uh, you can also show... Oh, where is that? Oh, here are the stars. Okay, yeah, you can have the star rating and you can rate them. Um, and there's also other things like uh, you can have hot cues, eight hot cues, or by default this one. Now there's a very complicated um, keyboard mapping setup that you can learn. And if you hover your mouse over anything, you can see uh, shortcut. There's hot keys for the crossfader, up and down. I believe there's also what is that? Ah, uh, okay. So we can use H and G to move the fader manually. Let's see how that actually performs. Okay. 
I'm not sure if it performs some uh, interpolation in the background so that this motion isn't as jagged under the hood as it is on the screen, like, you know, when clicking this, moving in quite a few big steps, but maybe it's interpolating it a bit. I don't know, but it's possible to drive the entire program with just a regular PC keyboard if you learn the hotkeys. But I think that one of the best things about this program and like is that you can map the controls to a MIDI keyboard. And I have prepared a little rig to record my MIDI controller. And we're going to map some controls and try to perform something. OK, let me get this prepared. OK, so as you can see, I have a MIDI controller here. It's an Akai MPK Mini. Mark one. Uh, I don't have the Mark two. I know it's it's much better, but it wasn't a thing when I bought this. Okay, so uh, first thing, let's map the crossfader. Now, what can you do? Uh, you can go to options, preferences, and uh, here we have the screen. Maybe let's move this out of the way. And in here we have uh, sound hardware, jack audio connection kit. Okay. What we can do is, okay, the outputs master by default system. So this is where your mix is sent. Headphones is your cue playback. This is very important. And when you actually want to play any DJ gig, you need a separate audio output to cue the tracks and listen to what you're going to play without the audience hearing it. I'm not going to be doing that. I'm not a real DJ. Uh, but when I, when I actually played a DJ set, I did that. I had a separate audio interface just for playback, and you can set it up here. Now there's a lot of other things you can do. Uh, you can like send every DAC to its separate output, so you can either either do post processing with some other application later, like Carla or or something, or record them in order or whatever. Now there's also input, and you can have like vinyl control devices so you can have actual vinyl records with time code encoded and you can spin them and scratch them and mix can pick that up and actually drive the virtual turntables with that you can also have microphone inputs up to four mics i'm going to select my system mic and the input is channel one which is this microphone right here mm. there's some other things oh it shows our system latency nice Oh, I dragged it and it's changed. Okay. Uh, wow, there's a lot of things added to it. There's library settings. This is where our music lives. And there's controllers. Now I have two controllers connected to my heart, to my system. Right now, I'm going to be using MPK Mini. Let's enable it. And now I'm going to go enter the learning wizard. Your setting must be applied before starting the learning wizard. Apply the settings. Yes, apply the settings. And now it shows us the MIDI controller learning wizard. How it works is we click on a control, it's selected crossfader. Now, I want the crossfader to be on um, this little knob here. So I move the knob until the progress bar fills up, and now it has learned. You can see that when I move my knob, the crossfader moves with it. There are some options. These are advanced options, so I'm not going to be dealing with that. We are very simple right here. Let's learn another thing. Okay, so what I want to do next is um, map these pads to stop and play individual rat, individual decks. So maybe we could have like deck one could be these four and deck two could be these four. So maybe play and pause would be de this deck. Let's try and do that. So. Okay, now this pad starts and stops playback of deck one. Let's learn the same one for deck two. I think something's not right. Oh no, it learned fine. Okay, so now we can control two decks, the playback with these two pads, which is fantastic. Now, you would want to maybe do some other things like a tempo nudge to different pads so you can like, you know, speed up and slow down the track a little bit to align them together. Like there's a ton of things you could do. Maybe we could map the pregame. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Where is the gain? 
this is gain. Prefader gain for this track. Okay, so um, let's do it like that. Okay, so this is track one. Now we can affect the gain. Okay, let's map this one for for deck two. Sorry, no track deck. And now we can adjust the gain of these two decks using these knobs, which gives us nice visual feedback. So we can just eyeball if the levers if the levels are right. Actually, this is weird because I think the left track is much louder. Sorry, you can see how quickly I was able to configure this MIDI interface, which isn't specifically designed for working with DJ performances. But I was able to use these pads and these knobs very quickly to control my DJing per setup and mix the DJing software. And that's really nice. Now, mix has a lot of features. I'm just going to be done with this uh, for now. Maybe let's just gloss over the other other functions. So output mappings and scripts. You can script entire behaviors for the controllers. So we could probably have like, you know, the lights flash, the... the, the... Oh, okay, I'm just... Okay, I'm just playing it now. We could maybe have the pads flash because if you send a MIDI note to the pads, uh, it, it they light up. So we could possibly program a script to like make the maximum out of that MIDI controller for mix to give us visual feedback. There's vinyl control. Um, I, we don't have that. Interface is the skin. It's the visual skin. OK, is the user interface skin. OK, there's a bunch of skins. I'm not going to mess with them. If you if you install Mix, feel free to check them all out. This is the language full screen mode. Uh, full screen mode is a good thing. Prevent screen screensaver from running. Well, that's a good idea. You don't want screensaver to to start when you are playing a, a gig. Waveforms. This is um, settings for these things here. How they are being rendered. How they are being processed. Mm, I think the defaults are excellent because they show you both volume and frequency information. The color is determined by the frequency spectrum of the signal in the current place. So that shows you the tone. I guess, and the waveform, of course, shows you the volume. You can also change the frame rate. Uh, I guess 60 frames per second is like the, the smoothest we can go. And OK, we also we can use like um, software rendering and hardware rendering, which is good. Dex, OK. OK, there are, wow, there are so many settings here. You can like really tune this to your needs. Um, there's also the settings of the EQ, so you can, uh, oh, there's also a master EQ. Okay. So you can correct like for the sound system playback, just by then you don't need any plugins. I'll reset equalizers on track load. That's a very useful thing. Um, this is the, okay. I think I would like to mix with that. Or maybe not. Effects. What is that? Oh, we can control LV2 effects. Wow, that's cool. Before, I would use uh, like external software like Carla to this is Carla to add like special effects to, to my mixing, like, you know, control them via MIDI CC. But now you could probably use these knobs to control these effects too. Oh, nice. Um, Wow, this has really made a lot of progress. You can also um, you can also like set up uh, live streaming through Icecast or Shoutcast, and you can also record your mixes right away uh, and add metadata. Okay, and here beat detection. I would rump it up to like 90 to 190 actually 180 yeah 
that would be the range I would want to do. Okay, it even analyzes the keys, so that's nice. Oh, and it can normalize to negative 18 LUFS. Well, that's a very good level. Wow. Multiplug decoder. Wait, so it can play track... It can play trackers modules? It can play... Whoa, that is awesome. You can, you can straight away play your mod S3M or XM files with this. Wow, the <laughs> that's so cool. Oh man, okay. All right, so uh, that's all. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you've learned something. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Check out Mix. It's free and open source software. It runs on, I don't know what it runs on. It definitely runs on Linux and Windows. Uh, not sure about Mac though. It's a wonderful piece of DJing software. And uh, yeah. Uh, also, big thanks to all the people who are supporting me financially. And if you, dear viewer, would like to join them and help keep this show going, please go to patreon.com slash anfa or liberapay.com slash anfa. Now go and make some music. Just so bad.